Happy Saturday, everybody. I hope you all are having a great weekend. I'm gonna show you a celebrity neighborhood that's actually turning into a disaster. Now, truth is, I don't know any celebrities that live there. I just hear like the rumor mills, like, oh, celebrities live there. The, the point, and you guys could correct me, but it's a super popular neighborhood in Nashville, super expensive neighborhood in Nashville. It's brewing disaster. I'm going to show you why. I'm also going to show you some hot spots. And we're also going to debunk some myths, some false narratives. I keep hearing like pocket listings and migration. We're going to talk about what those mean for Nashville. And I'm going to give you a general Nashville housing update. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you'll be entertained. Let's get into the data. Okay, let's start with myth number one. I've, I've, I've heard this a couple different times is like, the migration is slowing down. It's it's no longer what it was. Um, I'm actually going to strongly disagree with this. In fact, pinned on my Twitter is a chart showing you what the population is, is some of the highest outbound migration, like California, New York, and Illinois, compared to where they're moving. Tennessee, only 7 million people compared to the 71 million. Williamson County, only 264,000. So the idea that migration is slowing down, uh, maybe it's slowing down, but I certainly don't see it. And we're gonna get into it right here. Uh, exhibit A, evidence A here. Nashville to Los Angeles for August 4th. If you need to rent a U-Haul truck, 26 foot U-Haul truck, it's only 2,800 bucks, Nashville to Los Angeles. However, if you're coming the other way from LA to Nashville, that will cost you $5,100. Guys, that is brutally expensive. The migration pattern is heading out of LA and it's heading into Nashville. So tell me if I'm wrong, like I'm open to being wrong, but it certainly looks that way to me. The other thing is too, like when we look at CoStar data and, and I guys, I got to tell you, this surprised me. Multifamily absorptions almost double what I would have thought it would have been this year. It's at 9,800. It's been pushing 10,000 now, which is just incredible, guys. It's just incredible. It stays at 10,000. Our under construction numbers dropped almost in half. If this number stays at 10,000, we could see this stuff get absorbed much faster. Now I've talked to people, they say, oh, it's going to take till 27, 28. I thought that too. I thought there's no way this is going to get through 25, 26. But with 10,000 absorption, we're, we're going to start seeing this flip in the next 12 months. And when that flips, all those empty apartment buildings are start filling up. They're going to fill up. The biggest risk, in my opinion, is not migration. Migration is just so strong. The biggest risk to housing is is household consolidation. Because what's interesting about this is even though we had this massive absorption number, look at 2022. So absorption in 2022 came to a screeching halt in Q3 and Q4. It was a disaster, a, a fourth of what it is today. What's interesting about this is, is the census data shows that we had net migration in Tennessee and in, in Nashville area during that time. Okay, that means there was household consolidation. And household consolidation, from what I can tell, has very little research on it. N not very much is talked about. If you know something, leave it in the comments. And yet, it seems to be the biggest risk to the market. Household consolidation could send this number to zero. So it's a big question. Are we going to see household consolidation? Let's keep going. Myth number two, pocket listings, people buying houses, doing it under the radar where it's underreported and then it's not showing up in aggregated data. I'm going to call this a conspiracy theory. You guys prove me wrong. When we just look at transactions changing hands on average, a fifth to a quarter uh, transactions that don't ever make it to the MLS. Now, this was heavily researched on my, my part. I spent way too much time doing this. And what I found was that it really hasn't changed in the past two years really hasn't changed since 2020. I matched closed MLS IDs and addresses to properties in Davidson County Property Assessors, 97% matched. I did not realize there were that many transactions. I haven't spent that much time on this, like to see exactly who it is or why it is. The ones I sampled seem to be flips. A lot of times it was just buy it off market, fix it up, and then sell it, list it on real tracks. So anyways, pocket listings, I don't, I don't know what the thing is about these. If you do, like, tell me what it is because I don't get it. This is not the risk. The risk is household consolidation, guys. If everybody can't afford to live where they're living and they move in with mom and dad or multi-generational houses, that's household consolidation. That is the biggest risk 
to this market right now, in my opinion. Now, I mentioned last week, when you see that spike of ratio between supply and demand, where there's tons of supply and zero demand, when nobody's making offers, that's the time to make an offer. That's where you can make the aggressive offers. And guess what, guys? Look at this spike. This is exactly what I'm talking about. It's in the middle of July, and it is high-rise condos in downtown Nashville. Guys, this is a disaster. And I'm not going to recommend buying high-rise condos because personally, I don't spend much time in the high-rise condo space. We almost, I helped a buyer almost buy one in the Adelicia, which we did a phenomenal job, by the way. We we got $80,000 off a condo there that ended up selling for full price. We canceled the contract after, I'm not going to go into it, but we can't, the contract got canceled. Nonetheless, we were in contract for $80,000 less than what it sold for. They had a backup offer, full price offer, uh, but we were able to successfully negotiate because we had data, we did a good job, but it's high rise condos. Guys, look at the risk here. You got what, what this shows you is the equivalent of right now, it feels like there's 18 months supply of high rise condos. We go to real tracks. What is going on at 1212? I mean, I'm talking a ton of listings at 1212. Actually, you know what? And that's, yeah, 1212. Let's go to my map here. Okay, 1212. Here we are. Look at this. One of the reasons I love this, I'll look at this. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad, guys. Look at this. So this green bar is price cuts. Okay, price cuts are skyrocketing right now in 1212. Inventory is skyrocketing. Look at it where it was in 2022. In 2022, there was not much inventory at 1212. Okay, today, there are 24 listings and there's only one under contract. That's like the equivalent of a 24 month supply or what feels like a 24 month supply and price cuts, lots of price cuts. So it's interesting to see this. We'll see, you know, a lot of condo owners aren't distressed or at least they haven't been. So we haven't seen the major price drops. Are we going to see the price drops on this? Let's take active out. You can see active and coming soon. There's one under contract at 682 a foot, which is kind of breaking down of like 700 a foot is where a lot of these have been transacting. So we're going to have, looks like one under contract, 682 a foot. It'll be interesting seeing where that closes, but all the active listings, you can see they're all over the map, well above that. But the only one that's under contract is the lowest priced listing. Very interesting guys. I'm telling you, it's so bad, it's good, okay? If you want to be, if you were just, if you were planning to buy a condo, a high-rise condo, I would just go in there and make the nastiest, most aggressive offer you can make. They don't have anybody talking to them. Nobody's talking. Nobody's talking. You've got all these options and so few under contract, lots of listings, lots of listings in the condo market. You can't rent these out. Are you going to be renting? You're going to be renting a seven, eight hundred, a million dollar for like twenty five hundred bucks, and you have to pay the HOA. It's rough right now, guys. Twelve South, which is a pretty awesome neighborhood. Okay, it's awesome. It's very popular. Uh, walk in twelve Jenny's ice cream. Twelve South Jenny's ice cream. But look at this: sixty eight listings. Sixty eight listings. We have the most price cuts we've seen, even more than what we saw in twenty twenty two. Remember, twenty twenty two is when all the prices dropped. This neighborhood is in much worse shape than it was in twenty twenty two. Right now, so what's going to happen? I don't know. You can see prices have popped back up to where they were, but are they going to tank? I don't know. It looks to me like. There's a lot of supply and not much demand. And now we've got more price cuts than we have than I have recorded here. I've never seen this many price cuts in this neighborhood. So that uh, looks to me like, again, I'm not going to tell you to buy, but if I was bu buying for sure and I was wanting to live in 12 South, now's the time to make an aggressive offer. Let's just look at the neighborhood. Let's look at see if we could see what listings are. Just a lot of listings. Man, I'm all over the map. Big opportunity there. You might, if you find the person that's motivated enough, that has enough equity, we're not even talking for sellers. They may just have a ton of equity and they're done. Okay, they sell it to get out. That's when you can make a big win aggressive offer. So anyways, that to me looks like there could be opportunity in 12 South. Let's go to a couple neighborhoods that are really smoking hot that are that are just much, much stronger than this. Oh, I also did, by the way, I did East Nashville. I know you guys had asked about East Nashville 
Red, it, red is seller's market. Green is buyer's market. It's literally just a ratio of supply based on the last 12 months of volume. So you can see here, there's eight active listings. 50 have closed in the last year. So even there's only one under contract. Lachlan Springs, very hot right now. And you can see here, it has cooled off some. You compare it to last year though. Last year was much hotter. Uh, many more contracts to active listings. Does look like as we get into August, it could pop up though. So that's something to keep an eye on. But let's go down. Let's go down to Franklin. Look at this down Franklin 65. All the places near 65 right here, much tighter supply than on the outer than the outer bands, which I think is interesting. Not to say that there's not tight supply on the outer bands, but just that in band right next to, it seems like every neighborhood, uh, much tighter supply. But let's look at Forest Crossing here. Look at this neighborhood. This neighborhood just blows my mind how hot it is. Look at this. The red line is virtually above it almost all the time. And that just means there's more under contract than there are active listings. It's a very hot neighborhood. It continues to be a hot neighborhood. Even today, where we have three active listings, there's still one under contract. So it does look like it could potentially be cooling off, but much, much tighter than it was even in 22. In 22 in July, there were a lot more listings, a lot more price cuts than what we're seeing today. So very interesting. And price prices still dropped but they've kind of bobbed up and down. I suspect they're going to continue to uh, stay strong or move up, but, but who knows? I mean, with that demand, it's just interesting that prices haven't really shot up. Be curious what you guys think about that. Why is it that these high demand areas, prices aren't necessarily going up, but then low demand areas, prices aren't necessarily dropping. Like even in 12 South where it's, it just looks like a disaster, and yet when we look at price, price has been relatively strong. We'll be curious to see your, your, your perspective on that. Does it have to do with motivation? Because if it does, look at price drops. Price drops in Davidson are mirroring what they were in 2022. There was a rapid increase. We started at a much higher point this year, but it's continuing to head higher. We're at 40% price cuts for active listings in Davidson County. That is absolutely wild. We look at Williamson. Williamson is much lower. Williamson, only 33% uh, have cut their price. And you can see we're about to dip below that 22 level. So actually Williamson County, Williamson County is much stronger guys. I, I, mean, I just don't want to say it's it, there. The sellers are nervous. Don't get me wrong. Sellers are nervous, but Williamson County is just much, much stronger. Active listings. We made a new high up 37.8% the last year. Okay. But when we look, where's it up the most? Not in Williamson County. Williamson County active listings are basically flat, only up one and a half percent. Look at Davidson County making a new, I mean, it's like there's no gravity in Davidson. 2431, just continuing to move up. Guys, Davidson, major yellow flags here. We haven't seen prices just really start dropping yet, but man, inventory is way up. Price cuts are way up. It's hard not to see this get really, really squishy in Davidson. Uh, let's look at contract volume. Contract volume, same thing here. Contract, look at this. We're flat. Contracts are flat this year compared to last year. We're basically flat. 2470 versus last year's 2475, but it's not even distribution. Rutherford down 7%. Williamson up 10.4%. Isn't that crazy? Williamson's up 10.4%. But you can see it's dropping. So it should drop along this red line. I suspect it'll continue to drop, especially into August. To me, the last two weeks of July, you've got, you're going to have potentially peak supply. Like when we look at supply, you're looking at in Williamson County, you've got peak supply, at least it peaked in July 31st of last year and then jumped up a little bit in November for a very short moment. But this could be peak supply for the year. And with contract volume tanking, it could be an opportunity. Again, when you see that demand drop and you have active listings staying on, that's where you get that ratio, those spikes. That's where people start feeling like, whoa, where did all the buyers go? They get nervous and you can have opportunity. So interesting there to under contract. Davidson, contract volume down 5%, even with all those active listings. You know, people that made the argument, the reason there's no closings, we just need more supply. There's supply shortage. Well, you know, Davidson County has, they have supply. Plenty of houses for sale, down 5% in contract volume. 
So anyways, so there's some hot places. There's some not so hot places and some myths being busted. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. By the way, if this is helpful, click the like button. Would appreciate it. Have a good weekend.